Hi all, I figured I'd make a few videos for you guys um, on these problems that we've been doing. It uh, might be helpful for some of you, and uh, if not, you don't have to watch them. Um, so this first one is 2010 form B number 5. So uh, this is a differential equation. Remember, differential equation is just any equation where there is a dy, dx, or some kind of a y prime, anything like that. It, um, it counts as a differential equation. And the first thing it asks us to do is just to sketch a slope field uh, and don't you only have to do it at the 12 points indicated which at first looks a little bit annoying um, except for this fact that if we look at this differential equation it should be obvious to you that when x is equal to negative 1 when x is equal to 0 and when x is equal to 1 you kind of have different things coming uh, going on so when x is equal to negative 1 uh, dy dx is always going to equal zero. All right, when x is equal to negative one, it's always going to equal zero over the y. Uh, so we can easily put in these slopes at negative one, we can draw a line segment of uh, zero. And this thing is obviously undefined right here. There's no definition right there. And that's not a huge concern for us because we're only looking at the, um, at the interval from negative one uh, to 1 for our x values. Uh, so that's not a huge concern. We don't have to worry about that too much. Um, and, and we'll see that in a, in, in a few minutes. Uh, at, at x is equal to 0, at x is equal to 0, our dy dx is equal to 1 over the y. Um, so what we're going to have here is we're going to have a, a slope of 1 over 2. Then we're going to have a slope of 1 over 1. And we're going to have something that's undefined. We don't, we're not asked to do anything or anyway. This is going to be a negative 1. And this is going to be a negative um, 1 half. So that's going to be a little less steep. I'm sorry. Then, oops, that's not a great picture. Um, and you don't have to be perfect on these. You really don't. But just do the best you can. I am not doing a great job. Uh, but we would be shooting for some point down here. We would just be less steep um, than we are up above. So... I'm actually going to make this a little nicer. Oh gosh, this is a little bit annoying. Um, but I want to make that negative 1 as, as much like a negative 1 as I can. And maybe I just write in an m is equal to negative 1 in there, just to make sure the graders know. And then for x is equal to 1, our dy dx is going to be 2 over y. So 2 over 2 is going to give me a slope of 1. Um, 2 over 1 is going to give me a slope of 2. Then we're going to have a negative 2 slope down here. That isn't great either. I'm going to draw it a little bit steeper, a negative 2, and then a negative 1. One of the things you might notice is as I travel along this line right here, it looks like I'm having slopes of, um, slopes of negative 1. And that's what I'm asked to do. I'm asked to sketch the solution curve that passes through 0, negative 1. So through 0, negative 1, you, all you have to draw for this really is to indicate that this is a line segment. This is a line going through here. This solution set that goes through 0, negative 1 is a line. It's not defined right here. Um, you know, I, on their rubric, I'll tell you this was three points. And it was one point for the 0 slopes, for having everywhere where the slopes are 0. Uh, one point for um, for the non-zero slopes, so indicating the correct um, the correct steepness of the non-zero slopes, um, and then it was one point uh, just for the solution curve. Um, and they're usually pretty friendly about this point, honestly, as long as you show it passing through that line and showing that it's linear. And it looks like this thing is going to be linear going on forever and ever and ever. I know in class, uh, for a few of you, I had indicated that maybe you could make this go uh, uh, vertical at negative 1 because it is undefined uh, when y is equal to 0. But because of this limitation on the, on the, um, on the x uh, values that are possible, you don't really even have to do that. I would just leave it just like this as a straight line. Um, for part B, it asks us to determine when dy dx is equal to negative 1. So in other words, for part B, we are being asked to solve uh, when x plus 1 over y is equal to negative 1. And when this is going to happen is just 
when negative y is equal to x plus 1 or when y is equal to negative x minus 1. And you can just indicate that. So dy dx is equal to negative 1. To get full credit, all you had to do is say dy dx is equal to negative 1 when y is equal to negative x minus 1. Um, and also when, of course, y does not equal 0. Uh, we can't have y being equal to 0. So, so that's kind of a funny point. I feel like it's an add-on point of some sort. It's not a difficult point to get. You just have to solve for the y values when, um, when this uh, differential equation is equal to um, negative 1. This is a line. This is actually the line that you just drew. Um, that's what it is. Those are the times when the slope is negative 1. Um, that's, this, that's this solution set right here. That is that line, that line with a slope of negative 1 and a y-intercept of negative 1. And then finally, for part C, you have to find a particular solution. If you see these words, this is always separate and integrate. Always separate and integrate when you are asked to find a particular solution. And believe it or not, this was five points. You would get one point for separating the variables. You get one point for doing the antiderivatives correctly. One point for the constant, remembering that plus C. Uh, one point for the initial condition being plugged in appropriately. And then a, the final point is actually to solve for the Y. Solve for the Y. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. We're going to start off with Y dy is equal to um, the integral of X plus 1 dx. So notice all I did was I separated these two things. I brought the y. I guess I should have rewritten dy dx is equal to x plus 1 over y. So I can go straight. I can bring the y over to this side. I can bring the dx over to the other side. So my y is going over here, and it's going next to the dy, and my dx is going to the other side. So that's my separate and then integrate. Now, taking the appropriate antiderivative should be straightforward for you. This is y squared over 2. This is equal to x squared over 2 plus x. And remember your plus c. Don't get scuddy. Now, we have to solve for our c. So we're going to plug in the 0, negative 2. We're going to plug in the 0 for the x. And we're going to plug in the negative 2 for the y. All right, that's what it's being indicated with this initial condition that it gives us. We can go ahead and solve for the C. In this case, our C is equal to 2. So we will have Y squared over 2 is equal to um, X squared over 2 plus X plus 2. And we can simplify that. We want to solve for the Y. So this is y squared is equal to x squared plus 2x plus 4. And finally, to solve for the y, we want to throw a square root on here. Now our final step is to recognize that this thing passes through the point 0, negative 2, and therefore y must be negative. This is a very rare point on the AP exam where they make this an issue. But we need our y to be negative, so we're going to throw a negative sign out in front. And those are five points. Count them. One, two, three, four, five. That's money in the bank right there. And you can get that correct.